What's going on, addicts? So today I want to talk a little bit about uh, some of the rookies, other than the high-profile ones, that I think you should be targeting in your drafts. Now, you know, we'll get out of the way right away. Obviously, we know Saquon Barkley is going to be a first-round pick, and he should be. Um, and then if you guys have uh, seen my tiers, or if you'd like, again, you can always download them. They're free. Download them in the description box below. Uh, but if you have seen them yet, you know that I'm really high on Royce Freeman this year. I actually think he is clear cut the better running back in Denver. And I think that it's not going to be a really hard uh, problem for him to get rid of Devontae Booker, who just hasn't really shown that he is going to be a good running back in the NFL. He can be a serviceable backup, but I think Royce Freeman is going to take that job pretty quickly here as the season goes on. So obviously those are my two big guys. Um, for the running back position that I'm targeting. Uh, there's not really any tight ends that are worth mentioning other than maybe like Hayden Hurst or Mike Gusecki, Hayden Hurst being the tight end for the Ravens, Mike Gusecki being the tight end for the Dolphins. I have them ranked pretty low. Probably not gonna end up drafting any of them unless I'm in a really deep league, uh, but rookie tight ends are a little bit difficult. What you typically find value most in uh, with rookies is the running back position because it doesn't take as much to uh, adapt to the NFL um, and then receivers we had you know every now and then we get a rookie receiver that does really well but overall rookie receivers are about the same so there's a reason that a lot of the rookies are going really late but that doesn't mean that they can't have value this year we saw Juju Smith-Schuster have value last year and pretty much every year there's at least one if not a few uh, receivers that end up having value and uh, same thing with quarterbacks too that can also be a really um, hard uh, position to grasp on quickly. The only quarterback that I would mention from a rookie standpoint that I think could have immediate fantasy value that you'd want to maybe stash in the later rounds would be Lamar Jackson. So I'm not projecting Joe Flacco to um, ever get kicked off as the starter. I think that if he's healthy, he'll play the entire year. But if for some reason, he does not, you know, he gets hurt or just the Ravens just start really bad and they just see what they got with Lamar Jackson. You always want to uh, target high upside quarterbacks like that, like we saw with Deshaun Watson last year. Quarterbacks that run the ball and have a decent arm uh, to throw down the field can really get a high upside week to week for your fantasy team because they can blow up your scoreboard especially if they get a lot of rushing yards because those tend to be you know a lot more valuable than passing yards based on your scoring system so that's the only rookie quarter quarterback that i would even really consider drafting this year otherwise there's so many other good quarterbacks and you're getting them so late anyway there's not really any reason to take a discount even further and get a rookie uh, but running backs definitely the ones that you always want to target so uh, unfortunately we lost darius guys he was going to be good this year, I think, in Washington. Um, Rashad Penny and Sony Michelle are both dealing with injuries. Those were uh, two of the first round running backs that we had this year. And um, overall, I wasn't really targeting them even before their injury. If they end up falling, you know, eighth, ninth round, then it's worth a shot. You know, anytime you have a rookie running back on your team, uh, especially if you don't have to pay a high price for them, it can return a lot of value. I mean, we've seen with what Kareem Hunt and Alvin Kamara did last year and what Dalvin Cook was looking like he was going to do. Uh, and then even in previous year, we saw what Zeke Elliott did. I mean, rookie running backs can have tremendous league winning upside for you. So my philosophy when I draft is try to walk out of every draft with a minimum of two, if not three, four or more rookie running backs, because you honestly never know which ones are going to pan out and just absolutely blow up. Because last year, no one no one could have predicted that Alvin Kamara was going to do the things that he did. But if you had that philosophy and you were just drafting rookie running backs towards the end of the draft, you land Alvin Kamara and he's a season saver. So those are the kind of guys that I target. But anyway, um, you know, I've gotten past all the more high profile ones. Um, and then one person I haven't mentioned yet, but his ADP is rising a lot too. So he's getting right around that range is uh, Carryon Johnson. Uh, the running back for the Lions. I think he's going to end up being the lead back in Detroit. So I think his ADP in the fifth round right now is justified. The issue is he's probably not going to do well the first half of the season because there's a lot of other running backs with Garrett Blunt 
and Theo Riddick and uh, Amir Abdullah there, that he's probably not going to get the workload that he needs to actually have a productive fantasy relevance for your team. Now, like I said, you when you take a lot of these players in the late rounds, you're hoping that they blow up towards the end of the year. The problem with Carrion Johnson is he costs so much that you really need him to produce right away, and I don't think he's going to. So he's the kind of guy that I would try to trade for after like week four or five. But anyway, that's just a quick aside. So uh, right now we see Ronald Jones is just plummeting in ADP. He's had two poor performances in preseason. And I'm, I hate to say it, but I'm actually loving it because his ADP was way too high before. He's not going to start the year as the starter. They're going to start with Peyton Barber. But Peyton Barber has shown us that he's just a conventional running back. He's nothing... Uh, nothing really special for fantasy in this league and Ronald Jones was actually the number one uh, rated PFF runner last year in college so we know he has the talent he has the big playability he just needs to get his bearings together and start understanding the playbook getting uh, you know getting comfortable on the field so I'm perfectly comfortable taking a running back like Ronald Jones not planning on starting him for you know the first however many games of the year because that's the kind of running back that if he actually gets his time to shine towards the end of the year could win your league for you so i'm targeting ronald jones especially if he falls into the seventh eighth round right now he's going around the back end of the sixth which could turn out to be tremendous value for you another rookie running back situation i'm monitoring right now and i'm leaning towards one running back in indianapolis is naeem hines now, Naeem Hines isn't going to be your typical three-down runner. He's definitely more of your pass catching back. But we've seen with players like Ahmad Bradshaw with Andrew Luck in Indianapolis can have running back one value. And right now, Naeem Hines is going around like 10th, 11th round. So those are the kind of rookie running backs I love targeting. Now, same philosophy with Alvin Kamara. Just pick him up. Keep them on your roster, see what you have, wait a few weeks. If nothing's happening and you need that spot, you can let them go. But overall, the longer you can hang on to those guys, if something happens, you know, if Marlon Mack goes down or if he just has a big game and the coaches realize, oh crap, we had this amazing player and we're not using him, we need to use him more. Having a player like that can just tremendously catapult your team to a much better position. So I'm targeting Naeem Hines this year. Um, Jordan Wilkins, I'd also take a shot on if he falls to like 13th, 14th round. I don't think he has as much upside as Hines does, but if Mac goes down and Hines doesn't end up uh, doing much on the field, then Wilkins could end up being pretty good. And then and if you are just looking for a last round shot, Kalen Balaz is another running back to keep an eye out for. I mean, they do have Drake and Gore in Miami, so it's not likely that Balaz will see the field too much. But if Drake gets hurt or Gore ends up finally falling off the, finally falling over the hill, being uh, you know as old as he is for a running back, there's still an easy path for Balazs to turn into the lead running back in Miami, which could still return value. Um, and then from a wide receiver position, obviously I talked. There's not too much to. Um, it's not really too much to focus on with wide receivers because typically it takes a while for a wide receiver to get good. But um, three names I just want to throw out there that I would take a shot on uh, this year. First is Michael Gallup uh, in Dallas. There's not a lot of receivers in Dallas right now. And the ones that they have, we don't really know who they're going to favor uh, in that system. Dak Prescott obviously lost Dez and Jason Witten this year, so there's a lot of targets to go around. And I think that Michael Gallup could, if he can learn the system quickly enough, I think he could be a huge value for your fantasy team this year. Uh, the other name I want to throw out there is James Washington for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Pittsburgh has shown us time and time again that they know how to draft rookie receivers and get them on the field. He's blown it up right now in preseason and likely his ADP is going to shoot up, which kind of sucks, but it's okay. Um, it still will probably be double digit rounds, so you can still get him at a pretty good value, but he could end up you know, doing similar things to what Martavis Bryant did uh, because he kind of has that big playability. Maybe not someone that you'll be happy with every week, but you can get him so cheap right now. It's a, it's a good stash and weight. And then the last one is Anthony Miller for Chicago. It, uh, he's just constant good reports from training camp that he's picking everything up and that he's always running with the first team. So I think Anthony Miller can end up being the wide receiver too uh, next to Allen Robinson in Chicago. So those are three wide receivers I target. And uh, overall, 
you know, went through a lot of rookies today, but try to put rookies on your team because those are the ones that end up giving you tremendous upside as the, the year goes on. Um, you know, every year there's going to be rookies that surprise us and do things that we weren't expecting. So, you know, no matter what you think about someone now, nobody thought Alvin Kamara was going to do the things that he was going to do when you drafted him in August. It wasn't until we saw what he could do on the field. We're like, oh, OK, that makes sense. So the more players like you have on that like that on your team, in my opinion, the more upside that you have. And if even just one of them hits, it makes your season so much easier to make playoffs and win your Super Bowl. Anyway, I hope this you guys found this helpful. If you'd like to see how I have all these players ranked, again, you can click the link in the description box below and download my PPR tiers. I'll be updating those uh, for the next couple weeks. That way you guys are prepared for your drafts. Anyway, I hope you guys have a good one. Peace.